Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be doing a full face of K-Beauty from skincare all the way through makeup. I got a big box from iHerb. I purchased all of this myself, by the way. This is not sponsored. I don't do sponsorships on this channel, but um, I got some new skincare. I saw like new products hit the website that I just really wanted to try. So I figured we could try them out together. I just got out of the shower. I washed my face, but I haven't applied anything yet and it's starting to feel a little tight. So. Why don't we go ahead and just get straight into it? All right, so the first product that I got is the Heartleaf 77% Soothing Toner. This says that it's the number one toner on iHerb's website right now, and it has almost five stars, so I was really excited to try this. Um, this says that it's a toner that's perfectly formulated to soothe, tone, hydrate, and balance the pH level of the skin. So here's a look at the bottle. It's 8.45 fluid ounces. And you all know I love a good toner. This is supposed to be completely unscented and just really gentle for your skin. So I like to just pour a little bit into my hand, rub them together, and then just pat it on like this. And I usually do a couple of layers of toner just to really saturate my skin and plump everything up. And it just sets me up for a really hydrated base. If you have dry skin, most of the time it's not enough to just wash your face and then put on a moisturizer. The moisturizer is gonna evaporate throughout the day. So you wanna just keep adding layers and really make sure that your skin is completely saturated. And a toner is a great way to do that because it's so lightweight. It basically feels like water. So even if you put a ton of layers on, it's not gonna leave you feeling greasy. So I do have another toner. By the way, this feels really nice, very refreshing, and it's just supposed to be an incredibly gentle formula. I was looking up what Heartleaf is because it's 77% of this formula and I had no idea. It says that it's an herb that grows in Southeast Asia and that it has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. And it also has an abundance of amino acids and fatty acids. So it helps to repair your skin's barrier as well. So I definitely love how soothing it feels and my skin doesn't feel tight anymore after washing. So that's awesome. I also got another toner. This is a spray formula and it's from the brand D'Alba. I've seen a ton of people talking about this lately. So I had to kind of see what the hype was about. It's their aromatic spray serum and it kind of looks like a dual phase toner. So you have that oil layer that's floating on top. And again, this is a spray formula that you can just mist all over your face. So unfortunately, everything that it says on the box is in Korean. I can't really read what the claims are, but I mean, as far as the ingredients, rose flower water is the number one ingredient in here. It also has niacinamide, vitamin E, avocado oil, glycerin, sunflower seed oil, camellia seed oil, olive fruit oil. I mean, it definitely has a lot of oils in it. It just keeps on going down. There's a lot of floral extracts in here as well. So I feel like this is gonna be awesome on my dry skin. Let's see how it is. So it smells really good. It's a mild fragrance, but it's herbal. So it kind of smells a little bit spa-like, really refreshing. I felt like the sprayer was so nice, just like a super, super fine mist. So that just added a nice layer of hydration, but it soaked right in, which surprises me because it has so many different oils in there. I was assuming it was gonna feel a little greasy, but it doesn't. Moving on, I got a serum from COSRX. This is a six peptide skin booster. It has hyaluronic acid, amino acids. It's supposed to even out your skin tone, hydrate firm and smooth and improve your skin's texture. So again, it has those six peptides in there. So great for firming your skin. And I've had really great luck with most of COSRX's products. So I was excited to try this. I'm just gonna pump a little bit on the back of my hand. It's actually a very watery serum. So I wanna show you guys what this looks like. I mean, as I pumped it on, it just kind of ran right down. So it's an incredibly thin formula. It almost feels more like an essence or a toner than it does a serum. So I'm just gonna pump a little bit again, just into the palm of my hand, rub them together and just start patting this in. It has a really slick, very slippery feel. It doesn't sink in quite as fast as a toner because it's a little tiny bit thicker, but I love the hydration that it's giving me and it's absorbing really nicely. So I'm just gonna give that a quick second. I also got another serum. This is from a brand called Numbuzin. I have no idea if I'm saying that right either. Um, this is the Protein 43% Creamy Serum. 
So this is what the box looks like. It's just really very simple. And it says that it's a cream in serum that strengthens the core of your skin by layering the watery cream texture of protein. The number one ingredient is actually oat protein extract followed by water. So on the front, I guess that's why it says it's 43% protein. So I don't know, it sounds really good. I feel like because I have dry skin, I always need to protect my skin's barrier. So here's a look at the bottle. It's a nice heavy glass bottle. So I like that. I'm just gonna pump a little bit on my hand so we can see what the texture is like. So yeah, it is much thicker than the CosRx serum. It's super creamy and it feels like it's gonna be extremely hydrating, almost like a cross between a lotion and a serum. So I'm just gonna start working this in. It has a really beautiful texture, very silky. It doesn't have any kind of stickiness to it. It's absorbing right into my skin, but it feels so comforting. Again, not greasy in the slightest bit. It's actually making my face feel super smooth. So I'm really excited to keep on playing with this one. Next up for moisturizer, I got one from Nature Republic. This is their Snail Solution Cream. So I've been using the Snail Mucin Serum from CosRx for years now. I love that so much. And when I saw this, I thought it would be really cool to try a snail moisturizer. So I'll just quickly show you what the packaging looks like. It's a huge jar. This is, how many ounces is this? It's 1.75 ounces, so almost a two ounce ounce jar that you're getting. And it's such cool packaging. I mean, it's really thick and bulky, but it's also very like rich and luxurious looking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the little thing here. And let's take a look at the texture. So here's inside the jar and it actually has that kind of stickier feeling. Like you can tell that it's a snail cream because it's got that viscosity to it and that kind of bouncy texture. So on the packaging, it says that this cream delivers ultra hydration, nourishment, and vitality to the skin, while the nutrient density fills into the skin's layer, forming a strong skin barrier and improving elasticity. And the very first ingredient is the snail mucin. So there, again, there's a lot of it in here. And it doesn't seem to have a scent. If it does, it's really mild. It's hard to tell because I put so many things on, I don't know. But just like putting my nose into the jar, I don't really smell anything. I don't see fragrance on the ingredient list, so I guess if it does have a scent, it's just whatever the ingredients are. And the texture of this is very rich and thick, so again, I think this is gonna be a cream for somebody who has really dry skin. It's making my skin feel awesome. I love the kind of bouncy feel that it has. It's almost like an immediate firming effect. So I'm really excited to keep using this one too. It, I think it gave me like a nice glass skin effect, so. Really nice. For eye cream, I got this one from the Haru Haru Wonder line and it's their Black Rice Bakuchiol Eye Cream. So Bakuchiol is the retinol alternative. So this is what the packaging looks like. And I'll just pump a little on the back of my hand so that you can see the texture. So it looks like a little bit of a thicker eye cream. It also has a really nice silky feel. So I'm just gonna pat this in. You know, even though it kind of pumps out a little bit thicker, as soon as it touches your skin, it almost melts into more of a serum. So it's not quite as thick and rich as I was thinking it was. So I think this will be great for daytime under makeup. All right, so skincare routine is done. Let's move on to SPF. I got this one from Etude and it's their Sun Prize Mild Watery Light. SPF 50 plus. So here's what it looks like. It's supposed to be a super lightweight, almost serum like sunscreen. So let's see what this feels like. Again, just gonna pump out a little bit for you guys. So the color itself is white. It kind of looks like a light lotion, but oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. It just completely disappears. And it does feel like a serum versus an actual cream. So that is really nice. So I've been talking about Korean SPFs for a while now, and they're some of the only chemical filters that I can use because the ones that we have here in the US have made me break out or they give me a rash. So for a long time, I was only using mineral sunscreens, but then I discovered the Korean ones and the filters that they're using do not bother my skin. And they're basically just the latest and greatest in sun protection protection. Unfortunately, our FDA here in the US is so slow. We haven't approved 
a new sunscreen filter since I believe the 1990s, but they're using these new ones in Korea, possibly Europe. I know they're always ahead of us as well when it comes to things like this, but I've tried so many different Korean sunscreens now and none of them have bothered my skin. And they also just have amazing textures. They feel like skincare. This one in particular just went right into my skin. It doesn't feel greasy. It doesn't have that SPF kind of a scent. And I just find the textures to be so thin and elegant and like I said just like skincare you don't feel like you're applying an SPF it feels a lot nicer than that so I would say if I had to compare this to the Beauty of Josen one that I tried a couple of months ago which I still love by the way this one's a little thinner and a little bit more serum like than that so I think this would be great if you have more oily to combo skin but even if you have dry skin like me it still added enough moisture and it's just really nice and looking at my skin I feel like everything looks so plumped up and healthy and all these products just gave me that nice glass skin effect my skin doesn't feel tight anymore so at this point in my routine is when I usually go and dry my hair if I leave it up in a towel too long it gets weird kinks in it so I'm just gonna kind of let my skincare soak in for a little bit dry my hair I'll come back and do my makeup but I did get one hair product that I wanted to share with you guys also from Nature Republic so this is their Argan Essential Deep Care hair essence. So I've never tried a hair essence before. I'm assuming it's kind of like a hair serum. So the texture is really thin. It actually almost feels like a hair oil. So I just want to show you guys. Um, and it has kind of a floral musk scent. It's not my absolute favorite smell, but it's not bad. It's just a little bit spicy. On the bottle, this says it's for extremely damaged hair. So I'm going to put this on, then blow dry, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. And I have to say that stuff made my hair feel really soft, like very silky and smooth. Blow drying was a breeze. I would say it, it could potentially weigh your hair down if you put too much because it has that oily feel to it. So I put like a half a pump in my hand and I focused it mostly on the ends of my hair. And then, you know, I kind of worked it up to the top. But like I said, it's just really soft and smooth right now. I feel like it gave me a little bit of shine and my hair normally feels very brittle because it's damaged. I also have some gray hairs that have that wiry texture and I feel like this just made everything feel so super soft. So I am happy with it so far. So I'm definitely gonna keep playing with this essence, but let's move on to makeup. I am so excited for some of these products. So unfortunately I don't have a new foundation. So I'm gonna be using the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream and I have it in the shade 23. So this has been a staple in my collection for many years. This is I think the first Korean BB cream that I tried. It does have SPF 42. I know I already have SPF on, so this is just gonna be some additional but what I love about the Korean BB creams in general is the undertone because these all have a little bit of a cooler almost slightly gray undertone that isn't yellow or orange and if you're someone like me who has a cooler undertone you know the struggle of finding a foundation that's not yellow or orange so this one actually is really beautiful but of course a huge downside to Korean complexion products is that the shade ranges kind of suck. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this out with the Sigma Soft Coverage F48 brush. I just got these brushes recently and I love them. They are so nice, really great to work with. This one's kind of like an angled foundation brush, so it kind of fits right into the curves of my face. And what I love about this formula in particular is that it just looks so natural on your skin. It doesn't look like foundation. It doesn't have that makeup-y look. It goes on basically like a moisturizer with some coverage. It's kind of the same concept as the It Cosmetics CC Cream or something like that, but I find that this just looks even more natural on your skin. And I'm pretty sure that K-Beauty was doing these way before any of the American companies started doing BB and CC creams anyway. So yeah, once I tried Korean BB and CC creams, I realized what a huge difference there is between the American ones and the Korean ones. I just think the Korean ones are so much more natural looking. All right, so I'm just gonna scoot a little bit closer because I wanna show you how natural this looks on my skin. The coverage is great. I would say it's like a medium, but it also doesn't look like you have this layer of makeup sitting there and it doesn't cling like to the dry patches. It just looks super seamless. So I really love it. 
So next, I think I wanna set my face with powder, which I normally don't do because I have dry skin, but the Misha BB Cream kind of leaves my skin feeling a little bit tacky. And if I were gonna wear a cream bronzer or blush, that would be totally fine. I wouldn't bother using powder, but I wanna use powder products on top of this and I just feel like they're not gonna blend as well with my skin having this dewy finish. So I wanna use the Pink Blur Powder from I'm Mimi. This is one of my favorite powders. It looks so smoothing on the skin and you guys know I'm not a powder person. I generally hate powder because I feel like it makes my skin look drier, but this one is magical. It just somehow blurs all my pores and makes everything look so smooth without the dryness. So I just like to use the little puff that they give you with the product and I just tap it in a little bit and just start patting it onto my cheeks. And I love every time I put this on, I feel like I can just watch my skin changing. It almost looks like I'm just applying a filter in real life. It's so cool. So I'll just do one half of my face and then I'll show you what it looks like up close. All right, so here we have the side with the powder. Everything looks really nice and smooth. And then when you go over here, you can see more texture, definitely more glow. And it doesn't quite have that little bit of an airbrushed finish like this one does. So again, it's just really smooth. It doesn't look powdery or dry at all. All right, so I'm just gonna do this side of my face really quick and then we'll move on to bronzer. All right, so the bronzer that I got is from Too Cool For School by Rodin. This is their art class bronzer and it looked so cool online. I'm hoping that I got the right color. I got the shade 1.5 neutral. So inside you have um, three colors actually. So I just wanna go ahead and swatch them on my hand so you can see what they look like. I think these are gonna work out really nicely. It's a little bit more of a cool tone palette. So this is what the actual palette looks like. It's definitely not too deep. I think it's gonna be great for my skin tone. For this, I'm gonna be using the new Sigma Soft Sculpt F11 brush. So again, I think I'm just gonna pick up all of the colors and see what these look like on. Yeah, this is a really nice color. I think it might be slightly more of a contour shade versus a bronzer shade, but I think it works really well with my skin tone for sure. It's definitely more of a subtle color, but I like that. I feel like I can be really heavy handed with bronzers sometimes. So if the color is really light, it helps me to not do that and not go overboard because then it can start to look muddy. Also from Too Cool For School, I got one of their blushes. So this one is the art class blush in the shade De Rose. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. The packaging looks pretty much exactly like the bronzer. It's just pink. And then inside you have the three shades here. So again, you can kind of mix these together or use them separately. And by the way, this is such a silky formula. The bronzer was too. So these are the three shades of the blush. You have one that's really, really light. Then you have kind of a peachy one in the middle. And then you have the slightly cooler pink at the outer edge. And this is what it looks like when you blend them all together. So I think it comes out a really, really pretty color. So I'm gonna use the Sigma Soft Angled Cheek F43 brush, and I think I'm gonna stick toward maybe the cooler side of the palette. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do a cooler toned eye, so I don't want my cheeks to look too peachy. So let's see how this blends out. This is such a soft color. I mean, the powder itself feels soft, but even as I'm putting it on, it just looks soft. Like it has this incredible seamless blend that really just takes no effort at all. It's again, a little bit more subtle. So if you wanna just build up the color, you can definitely just add more. It's just so gorgeous and it almost has a little bit of a smoothing effect on my skin too. Also, I'm loving these new Sigma brushes. Not to like compare to different brands or anything, but they remind me so much of the BK Beauty brushes. I think they're definitely an upgrade from Sigma's original face brushes. And I didn't think that those were bad by any means. I thought they were really nice, but these just have an extra velvety quality that just like blend things out so well. Next up for eyes, I got this palette from Etude and this is called the Autumn Closet. And I know this is kind of random because we're heading into spring at this point, but it just looks so pretty. It's an interesting color story. You have a little bit of smokiness in here, but it's mostly mid-tones and lighter shades. And I'm just gonna quickly insert some swatches because I can't swatch this whole thing out on my hand right now. So I'll just do it after the fact so you can see what all the colors look like. But I think these look gorgeous. It's mostly a matte palette. You have three shimmer shades. So I think I'm gonna start out with this kind of dusty mauve -y shade right here. It's actually called Brownie Mauve, which is like the perfect name for this. So I'm just gonna start working this into my crease and this is the Sigma 
Diffused Blend E24 brush. Whoa, this is way more pigmented than I was expecting. I think I picked up too much on the brush. I'm just gonna take a clean brush. This is the BK Beauty A503. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this off because like I said, I put way too much. I'm used to Korean eyeshadows being not super pigmented. So I was not expecting that at all. I will say this formula is so soft, really, really easy to blend. So I'm liking it so far. Next, I'm gonna grab this deep cool tone brown right here on the end. And this is the A502 brush from BK Beauty. So I'm just gonna work this into the outer corner and just work this back toward the center of my lid. And guys, I have to say, this is surprising me. I mean, for a dark shade, it doesn't look patchy and it's just so easy to blend out. Definitely more impressed with this formula so far. I just really love this cooler toned, kind of chocolatey brown shade. It's so soft and pretty. Then for my lid, I just want to apply this beautiful cool pink shimmer. So I'm just picking this up with my finger and I'm just gonna pat it right on my lid toward the inner corner and then just bring it back toward the center. I was thinking this was gonna be kind of like a topper, but it does have quite a bit of pigmentation behind it. So it's not just a wash of glitter. You can actually see the color, which is nice. I think that showed up beautifully. And by the way, there hasn't been any fallout with this palette at all, not with the mattes or the shimmer so far. So I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other eye really quick. Like I said before, I'm just really surprised by this palette because it's performing a little bit more like what we're used to here in the United States. Other Korean eyeshadows that I've tried in the past were very, very sheer. Most of the shimmer shades were like a topper. So this palette in particular definitely has a bit more of a Western feel. So anyway, guys, I'm really impressed so far. And this palette just has the most beautiful muted earthy tones. So I can't wait to play with it a little bit more. Next up, when it comes to mascara, I purchased another tube of the Hamish Smudge Stop Mascara. This is a tubing formula and I tried it in the past and I felt like it flaked into my eyes a bit so I was a little uncomfortable by the end of the day but I'm hoping that maybe I just got a bad tube because so many of you guys have recommended this to me knowing that I like tubing formulas and so many people love it so here's a look at the tube itself so it's a black tube with a rose gold cap and then the brush is a really nice skinny brush, which I love. It has a little bit of a curve to it as well. And it's not a silicone or plastic brush. It's like a traditional style mascara wand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start building this up. It is a really nice formula. I felt like I got a lot of length and volume out of it last time. It's just that for some reason, the tubes didn't stay on my lashes. They just kept falling, like even before I had a chance to wash it off. And they were getting in my eyes and under my contact lenses, which was really uncomfortable. So I'm hoping it doesn't do that. I wanna give this another shot. I thought, you know, maybe the one that I got had been sitting in a warehouse for a long time and it was kind of dried out. So we'll see how this one goes. The formula is a little bit on the wetter side. So I have to be careful not to make it too clumpy. So far, I'm really loving the length that I'm getting out of this formula. So like, as you can see, just one eye to the other. It's a really nice lengthening formula. It's also very thickening. Like I said, I think almost too much so. You have to be really careful not to apply too much. So I think I'm just gonna leave it there and do the other side quickly. But I also like how thin the brush is because having hooded eyes, those big, thick, chunky brushes always mean that I get, you know, mascara on my lid somewhere. I find the smaller brushes are just so much easier to control. All right, so lashes are done. I definitely love the way that they look at the moment. So I'll have to pin a comment down below and just let you know if this flakes on me again. I know it doesn't smudge, which is a great thing. It's a tubing formula, but the flaking was something I just couldn't stand last time. So I hope that doesn't happen again. Moving on, I have a bunch of lip products and I figured I'd just try them all on for you guys so we can see what they look like. And these are pretty much all recommendations from you. You have all told me about these formulas and I, believe me, I notate everything down that you guys tell me about, you know, for future purchase. So I'm excited. I have a couple of different formulas. The first one is from a brand called Romand and it's their 
Glasting Melting Balm. So a lot of you said that these are kind of sort of similar to like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, but better. They're not as like thick and goopy. So I'll show you what the packaging looks like first. These actually feel so nice and heavy. I mean, it really feels like a high-end lip balm. I'm super impressed. I love the ombre effect that the cap has. It's really nice. And then I'm just gonna quickly swatch these. Ooh, I love the texture. This is, yeah, this is so much like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips in the way that it's almost like a lip gloss in a stick. It feels super melty. So the two shades that I got were Kaya Fig, which is this one up here. It's kind of like a peachy shade. And then down here we have Mauve or Mauve Whip, which is a little bit more of a cool tone pink. And the bullets are just like a flat bullet style, kind of like a tinted lip balm would be. So I'm gonna try the Fig one first. These have kind of like a tropical fruity scent. It's not like a strawberry or like a berry. It's more tropical, maybe mango or something. It's not my absolute favorite, but I think the feel and texture of these more than makes up for that. This feels so nice. It's really smooth, very cushiony. It's not goopy like the Tarte ones. I would say this is heads and tails above that. It feels incredible. I really love this. So this is the shade Kaya Fig. And then this is the shade Mauve Whip. I just can't get over how good these feel on my lips. It's a nice balmy texture that's not too thick. I feel like it's just a little bit more thin and weightless than the Tarte ones. So thumbs up, whoever recommended these to me, thank you so much. I hope you're watching. Let us know down in a comment below. I love them. I'm like ready to go out and buy more shades. As far as tinted lip balms go, they check all the boxes. They're glossy, they are incredibly hydrating, they make my lips look smooth. They're actually really pigmented as well. They lay down so much color in one swipe. So so those are awesome. Next up from the brand Peripera, I have these ink glasting lip glosses. This is what the packaging looks like. So the one on the top, the more peachy tone is called Love of Fate. This is number eight. And then the purpley pink one on the bottom is number five called Way to Go. And the applicator is like the really large oversized doe foot. It kind of looks similar to something like the Maybelline lifter glosses. So um, again, this first one is Love of Fate. And these have kind of like it's almost like a fruity vanilla kind of scent. To me, it smells a little bit like a creamsicle. Mm, it's really nice, very, very soft. They have a really nice thin texture. It's not too goopy. So again, this is the shade Love of Fate. And then this is the shade Way to Go. Ooh, I love this color. These also have that really cushiony, comfortable feel. So again, here's Way to Go. And I just realized I never swatched these colors on my hand either. So let me just do that really fast. Okay, so up top we have Way to Go. And then this one is Love of Fate. Also from Peripera, I got two shades of their Water Bear Tint. Again, I got one that was a little bit more neutral and then one that was more pink. The packaging is actually really cool. They come in these round frosted tubes, but they have a square cap. So it looks really interesting and kind of different. So let me just swatch these on the back of my hand really quick. They so far have a really um, thin, almost weightless texture with a little bit of a glossy finish. They almost feel like a lip serum. So the two shades that I have are pure pink up here and this one's called Announce Beige. So the pink one is a little bit brighter and then the beige is just more of an everyday neutral. All right, so I'm gonna try the beige one first. Yeah, these are really, really thin, just like a lip stain. And the color is a little bit translucent, so I feel like you can see your lip color through this a little. It's not a full pigment, but it just gives you a little wash of color. So again, this one's called Announce Beige. And yeah, if I go to wipe these off my hand, these actually do leave a stain behind. The previous glosses didn't. So this is something that's gonna be a lot more long lasting. And then this next one is pure pink. I can't get over how thin these feel. They're really a nice lightweight formula. All right, so here's the shade pure pink. And yeah, these definitely leave a bit of a soft stain behind. And if you're someone like me who has two slightly different colored lips, like my bottom lip is a little darker than the top one, 
that's going to still show through because these aren't really a full coverage lip product. So with a product like this, my lips are not going to look completely even. I keep feeling like I have to put more color on the top lip and I don't know if that's necessarily going to work. Let me see. Yeah, so it looks a lot more even now. Just something to keep in mind if you have two different colored lips like I do. But yeah, this is definitely a gorgeous lip color. Very easy to wear. It's comfortable. It reminds me a little bit of the Rare Beauty lip oils. And I think those were kind of taking a nod from K-Beauty. There are a ton of formulas like this out there in the K-Beauty world. So just to show you what this would look like later, I'm just going to blot and take away the shine. And the color that I'm left with is just kind of a softer, more diffused lip stain. So I like these a lot. I think they're really fun and they're a good alternative to people who like me who have really dry lips and you don't wanna use one of those alcohol-based stains. These feel a lot more comfortable. All right guys, so that's everything that I have. I hope you enjoyed checking out all of this new K-Beauty makeup and skincare with me. I had so much fun. And like I said, I need to do this more often and try out some more things from Korean products because I really liked everything everything that I tried today. I didn't have any duds or anything that was weird. So I think the quality is always good. Everything is relatively affordably priced, kind of similar to drugstore here in the US. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. And I will see you all in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.